Adventurine is like the Zhongli of Star Rail. Now, what exactly do I mean by that? Well, if you didn't know, Zhongli Shield has like 100% uptime, meaning unless something absolutely destroys it, it can be casted again before it even expires. In the Gambler's case, he has multiple ways of casting his shield for the entire party, even if it's not his turn. Basically leaving you protected at all times, not to mention it's a pretty strong shield with at least 3000 plus defense. To be a lot more specific about this comparison, it's actually a lot more like C2 Zhongli to be exact. Zhongli's Constellation 2 provides everyone with a shield after he does his ultimate. However, the default way of casting his shield is still available. Adventurine can also deal a fair amount of damage despite being a preservation character. Now this is definitely not anything new if you look at the previous characters of the same path, but his traces make it a lot more convenient to put out damage. Not to mention his ultimate is literally a full on attack, much like Zhongli. However, in the Genshin community, Zhongli's ultimate you could say is known for being a DPS loss. However, looking at how it works, it's the same kind of feel of, hey, I'm a sustainer, but I have a damage incentivized ultimate. Not to mention, his ultimate also keeps enemies in place for a few seconds, which can be very helpful. Once again, another small addition that makes things more comfortable. And speaking of comfortable, let's talk about the other team-wide help they both provide. When Adventuring does his ultimate, he's going to hit an enemy. When that enemy gets hit, they're going to have this status effect on them. And then when an ally hits that enemy who Adventuring just did their ultimate on, they'll have crit damage increased. And on top of that, whenever an ally has adventuring shield on them, they get 50% effect res if that talent were to be maxed out at 10. So just to name a few, you can see how he benefits the team, not just by the shield, but by upping their damage and survivability. But hold on a second. That's starting to sound a bit familiar. Zhongli has 150% damage absorption against all elemental and physical damage. So basically, most things that enemies would use to attack you, with the exception of damage over time mechanics, for example, corrosion. And he also gives 20% elemental and physical resistance down of the enemies around you, just for being shielded. Now, of course, these are two totally different games where things work completely differently, but the main thing about them is giving defensive utility while also upping your other character's damage. And ironically enough, both of these characters have to do with money in some way. Adventuring many times has been called a gambler due to his insane luck, and Zhang Li being a whole god is the creator of Mora, which is the currency into that. And we can even take it a step further. Zhang Li and Adventuring both have the yellow color scheme because Zhang Li is Geo and Adventuring is imaginary. Now you could say they can both transform, but I don't know, I guess we'll stop the comparisons there. <laughs> However, I can confidently say Adventuring will prove to be a very solid unit. Things might get hairy with high level, like, you know, Gears and Gold or the Conundrums and things like that, but I still think he can definitely hold his own. Personally, I don't like to compare him to Fujuan since he's a shielder, not a tank slash like damage mitigator. But of course, same path, same conversation. Fujuan is amazing, even to this day, and if you have her light cone, she's like godly. However, you can only have one Fujuan for a team, meaning it wouldn't hurt to have another amazing defender on your side. And as someone who does not have Fujuan's light cone, I can definitely say moments get very scary when the enemy hits all four of your characters and Fujuan just insta dies. That can be very scary, and that's kind of one downfall about her without her light cone. Maybe that'll change when she has it. Considering almost every enemy has imaginary weakness in the game, <laughs> I would think it'd be a given that I enjoy this lucky guy over someone like Japard. I mean, I'd hope so since Japard is a standard unit, but everyone still has their use cases. But specifically, if we're talking about preservation units, being able to get your shield back with Adventurine by using your skill in your follow-up attacks is just wild. In conclusion, I'm very happy with Adventurine as a written character and gameplay-wise. I actually skipped Luocha for the second time, since Adventurine seemed more modern and sustained feels a lot more comfy to me at least. 
Here's a stress test right here with people on the brink of death at one health, still making it through, just to show how often he gets his shields back. Definitely a good unit for follow-up teams and just sustain in general. Enemies do hit very hard in this game and it definitely feels good to be able to take the brunt and keep on doing damage without worrying about dying. What are your thoughts on this handsome IPC lad, gambler, Kakavasha, adventuring, you name him? Did you pull him? Do you like him? Did you skip him? Let me know below. That'll be all for me and I will catch you guys in the next one.